Hi, everyone. Thanks for watching our continued AU Passes series. I'm Jason Kunk with CAD Microsystems. Today, we have Laura Hanyak talking to us about ACC model coordination covering cloud workflows supplemented with Navisworks. Uh, Laura's a rock star talking about these things. I'm so excited that we get to hear from her again. She has an outstanding way of kind of uh, consolidating and simplifying and just making it, it, it straightforward to understand, some, which can be a very complicated process. Real quick about CAD Microsystems. We are a consulting firm. We specialize in software training, professional services, and BIM expertise for commercial and public sector customers in the design, build, and operate industries. We have a team of industry-recognized experts. We have published authors, registered architects, engineers, construction experts, and top-rated speakers at Autodesk University and Built. Our customers call us when they are frustrated with their design processes and technology, and they want to improve efficiency, add new capabilities to win more work, and stay competitive. We'd like to say we take an educational approach to solving our customers' challenges, and we're focused on helping each of them achieve their organization's business goals. As I mentioned here at CAD, education is one of our core values, and one of the ways we support this is through this AU Passes platform. We work to empower the design and construction community to share knowledge and connect with one another by providing this platform, AU Passes, and our BIMXT network. So the AU Passes series came from feedback we got from many of our customers and their frustration at not being accepted to speak at AU, not because their presentations and ideas are innovative or relevant, but simply because you can only pack so much content into a three-day conference. Again, we're really excited to have Laura here, and I'm going to hand it over to her. Great, thanks Jason, I'm really excited to be here. Um, so I do have over 15 years of experience in this industry, working as both a licensed architect and my current role as a senior virtual design and construction coordinator and a BIM process manager. I've worked on a wide range of project types, a lot of mixed use multifamily, education, both K through 12 and higher ed education, as well as some commercial office space. And no matter what side of the industry I've been working on or what market sector, I've always been really interested in how we can use technology to help us improve communication and how we can create a more collaborative approach to what we're doing within our project teams, whether that's internal teams or working with external stakeholders. In my current role, I am working with Clancy and Thais Construction Company. We are a nearly 75 year old company headquartered here in Raleigh, North Carolina, with six locations across the Southeast. We've most recently opened an office in upstate South Carolina, so it's really exciting to be a part of a company that's growing and a company that really embraces technology. So as Jason noted, I'm here today to talk about how ACC model coordination can be supplemented with Navisworks. So one of the ways that our company has really embraced technology is implementing the ACC Build platform. So as a part of this, we really looked hard into the model coordination piece of it to see how we can fit that into our workflows. So I've broken up today's presentation into a couple of different topics. And the first is model setup, because this is going to be the same no matter which path we choose. How do we actually get models up here to be able to use in our coordination workflows? We'll then diverge a bit. We're gonna go ahead and talk about the plugin available for Navisworks so we can use our tried and true methods um, but still relate back to um, the advantages of working on the cloud. We'll then dive in a little bit more for those of you that wanna jump into ACC model coordination. We'll take a look at the tools that we have available today within that platform. And then finally, we'll wrap up and pull it all together with ACC issues. So no matter what path we've chosen to take, we'll end up back in the same issue platform. So to start with model setup, if any of you have used glue or any other kind of model ways to combine models, this is pretty similar. We're just pulling everything up to one spot so that we can look at an entire model in one consolidated view. So we've got some initial steps that we need, need to do in ACC model coordination. So on this slide, the words that I have highlighted in purple are like specific terms to the model coordination tools. So we'll start with defining our project coordination space. We will then upload models to that defined folder, and then finally create views in model coordination. So if we wanna do this setup, our first step is to define a coordination space. 
I'd like to point out that you'll note in this interface, I'm actually in model coordination and looking at settings because I cannot access the coordination space settings within the overall project settings. So just something to keep in mind right off the bat here. Once we get into our coordination space settings, we're gonna go ahead and define a folder where we want everyone to upload models. We might have different coordination spaces for different types of coordination that we're doing maybe different areas of the building or different trades involved, different project participants involved, we can all create those as different coordination spaces. You'll see that we have the option here to set class detection on or off. When you're going through the setup, it will warn you of this when you're going through the setup, but I do like to point out, because I made this mistake, you can't change this after the setup. So if you wanna use um, class detection, the automated and model coordination, you have to get this right from that starting setup. So once I've got my coordination space defined, I've already, we actually factored our standard file structure into the coordination space so that people that we worked with before are still uploading files um, to similar spots that they've done before. And it's now all within this coordination space. With the coordination space defined, it's now time to actually upload models to that defined folder. So as of today's recording, the file types you can load up into model coordination are Revit, NWC, DWG, or IFC. A, th a few things to note is that NWCs do process faster than Revit files in our experience. I think that is partly due to the fact that when you're uploading a Revit model to files, it's already doing some processing in those first steps. That's how we're able to access data in the model, but also look at sheets in the model, that kind of stuff. So that does slow it down um, if we're trying to do a tight turnaround here on getting models uploaded and processed in model coordination. We've also noticed that Revit cloud models tend to process faster than non-cloud Revit files. That may not always work. I know in my workflow, we save designer files as non-cloud Revit files so that we can override them in files, ACC files. Um, so that's where we just kind of stuck with the non-cloud Revit files because it worked with our workflow. And then another caveat to keep in mind here when we're thinking about using Revit files specifically is if we do want to have separated systems here in our workflow, coordination workflow in ACC model coordination, we need to use Revit publish views to have those separated out. So there's documentation out there. Obviously I'm on publish settings in Revit, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail. What I do wanna point out is this was a project where I was starting a constructability review. So this wasn't as detailed as a full on coordination process, but I went through and I created separate 3D views that showed the systems that I wanted to pull out. You'll notice like I also have an architectural all other view that was just kind of a, rever a reverse filter of other filters I was using to make sure that I was actually capturing all the information that I would need. A few options here when we're talking about publishing Revit models. The first is that trades or I could say project participants um, create views for each of their systems. So they are responsible for creating these views in their models. So example, a mechanical contractor would create a different view for a return duct, supply duct, exhaust duct. Another option that I've seen used is where the coordination lead is actually linking all the Revit models into a container file and then creating individual views for all systems. So the examples here I gave, you know, like return duct, sanitary pipe, really everything you see here on this list that I had done. This does lose some of that flexibility um, of having trades upload and then it be readily available. However, I think this works if it works with your current process. And then the third option, listing is an option, but is just to, in lieu of doing these separate models published, um, to go ahead and use search sets in Navisworks. One thing to note is that in the model coordination environment, you can't override element or system colors or transparency. You have to do that all within the native authoring tool. So now that we've got all of our models into the right spot, it's time for actually to us to combine 
multiple models into what are called model coordination views. And these are the views that can be opened up in Navisworks. So to do that, we're just gonna go into model coordination and models, select all the models that we wanna combine and click open in viewer. It's gonna take us into, you know, obviously we can name this. The thing I like to point out here is we can make both private and public views. So I see this useful. Maybe I'm doing some internal coordination that I maybe don't want other trade partners to see yet because it's not quite ready for prime time. I can actually make that a private view so that I am the only one that can see it. For the most part, we will be using public views. Once I have my views created, I come in here, I can see all the different views that I have made. And if I would click on that federated model, I end up in just like what we expect to see. All of my trade models loaded into one federated model that I can navigate around. The other thing I'd like to point out here is that we have the ability to actually save a view to docs. In our typical workflows, what we've done using Navisworks is we publish an NWD and save it to files. So this achieves some of the same thing. If we flip over to files after I've saved to docs, so now I'm in either build or docs looking at files, I can actually look at that model. So here I am actually viewing this model in files. I think that model performance wise, this actually works better than a Navisworks um, published NWD. So this, the advantage of putting it here in files is anyone on the project team who has access to this model can navigate around and we don't have to worry about getting them access into model coordination and getting them up to speed on where to go within different places of that interface. So since we were uh, spending a little bit of time in Revit there, I got a quick question. Um, you, you, sh you walked through kind of the views and setting a public published views. Do you have any other lessons learned from working with Revit models um, in this workflow in this process? So in the time that I've been working with Revit files over the years, I have found that kind of each at each step along the way where we're incorporating different workflows like newer technology and more people into it, we really have to be more mindful of what we're doing in that model. So if we do want to go ahead and put the responsibility like on a trade partner or a, maybe a consultant for being responsible for those views, I think that's just something that has to be made very clear from the start. That's a good place for a BIM execution plan, um, a line in there about how these are going to be set up so that we set that level of expectation and we get it right. So, so really it's, it's it comes down to communication is so much of this. Exactly. Yep. 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 Perfect. Thank you. Sure. So now we're going to step into the Navisworks plugin. Like I said, you know, we can still use some existing workflows that we have that people are comfortable with and then we know work. Um, the other thing is a lot of trade partners are really comfortable in Navisworks. So this is also a good way to kind of ease people into these different workflows. So in order to use this Navisworks workflow, we have to download the coordination issues add-in. And once we do that, we'll get this coordination tab. And from there, we can actually go to open a model from model coordination. We've got this interface. We could open up individual models if we wanted to. Obviously, we're selecting our project. We can select our coordination space. And then we're gonna go ahead and select our views. So we have all of our different views here. If I go ahead and actually open that, um, you'll see this is just what I would expect in Navisworks, all the same functionality that we've always had in here. I will note, um, use Navisworks 2024 or newer so that you're actually able to save viewpoints from this model from model coordination. Once you save it, the next time you open this model in Navisworks, you'll be able to open those viewpoints. Also on this coordination tab, we have the ability to manage issues. So obviously that's where we're getting at here, right? How can we keep all these issues together in one place? So I'm gonna go ahead and manage issues and that is going to open me up into this dialog. So by default, it's going to have all my issue push pins showing on the screen. So I can see those little orange dots where I've previously identified issues. You know, I've got a sanitary line going through a storm line right here. I've already got that marked. If I'm doing visual inspection, 
I can go ahead and I can also manually create issues. So I'm just going to click on create issues. I'm going to flip to a similar project here where I clearly have a pipe going through some structure. So you'll notice I placed that dot on that pipe. It's actually going to title the issue based on the element that I've selected. The other key here is that it's also going to tie it to that model. So this was a project where I was doing that constructability review where we were actually using Revit files in lieu of NWCs because of the process. Um, and also it was a smaller, smaller file size. So it's actually going to attach that issue to that file. So if I go ahead and I flip back into model coordination web interface, open up this model in model coordination, I can go ahead and click the issue button, which is the check mark inside of the circle. If I select the issue, so here I selected this issue number 10, it's actually going to tell me that there's another model that's affected by this issue, and I probably want to see it because then I can see the context around what's going on. So I'm going to click Add, and now it's going to bring in that structural model. So see, it also brought in another issue that was associated with that structural model, and I can see all of that information in one place. I'd also like to note that when you're actually creating the issue, there's probably like a three to six second delay while it's kind of doing all that background processing of creating this issue. So if you're one, like in our workflows, we might create an issue or we will create an issue and then quickly start typing in, trying to capture what someone else is saying in the meeting. You know, they're given a duck size, you're trying to get that in before you forget and like two different people are talking at once. So we found this to be a limiting factor because we do have that weight. So we've just gone back to methods that we know that work, but we can still utilize these issues where we are actually creating a few points in Navisworks. The advantage there too is if we have, we're have we doing any markups, we can do that right on the um, viewpoint. And then after the meeting, we're going through and marking individual issues based on these viewpoints. And although that does sound like a lot of extra manual work, no matter what process you're using, we're still going back through issues after a meeting to make sure that we've got everything labeled correctly, we've got good descriptions in there, we're making things actionable. So we're already going through that step to go through it anyways. This just makes it able for us to incorporate this with issues. You, you, you showed something in there about a specific um, feature in 2024. I, I know ACC has limitations around Revit versions. So like if you if you put a cloud model up there and it's just Revit 2023, all your cloud models for that project in 2023. Does ACC have that same kind of limitation around your Navisworks file release versions? No, it does not. Um, that was the only caveat that I've found is, you know, in Navisworks, we don't have to worry about backwards capability. I can open up model coordination models and order versions of Navisworks that the only caveat I've found, there might be others, is that right now you can't save viewpoints in older versions, only in 2024 and newer. However, I could see the way things are moving that newer versions of Navisworks will probably have more of this functionality, you know, they'll incorporate more of the cloud functionality into it. They may not be available in older versions. Gotcha, perfect, thank you. So now if we're ready to dive in, you're, you want to go in, you want to try out ACC model coordination. We're going to go through how some of those workflows work in terms of coordinating a project. So if any of us have seen anything about ACC model coordination in the past several years, you have likely seen this clash matrix. So I'm not going to go into all the details of this because this is pretty well documented. A few things I just want to point out that I think are useful when you're kind of getting this workflow off the ground or trying to smooth out what you've got is two things here. We can open up a specific view within, not open up a view, but we can filter down basically a view here in our clashes. And we can also get a list of all the models that we want to see in this clash matrix. So if I zoom into this matrix here, obviously if I click on the like, I have 19 clashes between plumbing level one and mechanical level one, if I would click on that, it would take me into the clash tool so I could see all those visually. However, what I think is the most useful thing about this interface, this matrix, is it gives us almost a heat map of what's going on. 
So I can look at this and the colors get darker the more clashes you have. So I see there's a lot of more clashes between plumbing and sprinkler. What does that mean for my project? Maybe I'm early on and we're still moving big duct around. We're still working out some sloped like sanitary and storm piping. So maybe sprinklers just waiting for all of that to be resolved before they go ahead and move their piping. So this gives us the opportunity to bring that up in a meeting and talk about what might be going on. And they'll say, yes, we're going to wait. So we can almost disregard that um, until we're ready to really dive into that part of the model. If we go into the clash area of model coordination, we have the ability to clash between different models. So in this case, this was that constructability review I've been referencing. I want to look at penetrations through masonry walls. So I can click on this pull down and I can select other models that I want to clash with that masonry wall model. The nice thing about ACC model coordination clash is because it's already doing that clash in the background, it's not like running clash on other platforms where you run the clash and then you have to wait for it to actually process. That part is already done. So I can see here, I click on this first clash group. So you'll also notice that ACC model coordination does some automated grouping. Right now it's grouped by object. Um, you do have some other options there for how you wanna group. But I'm gonna select my first clash group here. And if I zoom in here, it's gonna show me the other elements that are clashing with it. And I could actually create an issue here. So if I look again at that view, let's say this was a situation where I decided that we wanted to talk about this with the structural engineer because we've got some pipes that look to be really close to the top of that wall. We wanna make sure we're not interfering with any bond beams or any other masonry requirements. We can go ahead and create an issue and get that working in our issue workflow. We also still have the ability to do visual inspection if we just go into a view. So here we're just in this federated model breakdown view. And we can, I see that I have a pipe running through a duct, so I can manually just create an issue. I'm gonna place it in that spot, same thing. I do have to wait a couple seconds for this to process, but then once that's done, I've got an issue. I now have the ability, once the issue is created, not live while making it, but once it's created, this is a newer feature, where I can actually go in and I can mark up. So I have the same markup tools or similar markup tools that I have available as other areas of ACC. So I can make it really clear what needs to happen here. This pipe needs to move to get out of that duct. Now, when I go back into my issue, you can see the thumbnail has been updated so that I can actually see that markup and anyone on the team that has access to this can see what I'm trying to communicate. So a way to really bring it all together within this model coordination platform. Uh, so I've got two really exciting questions for you about file types here. Um, it, it, Navisworks can open just about every file in the world. Um, can ACC model coordination, does it have the same list of supported file types? So like I was talking about at the beginning, we can only do Revit, DWG, NWC, and IFC. However, in my five years of doing model coordination, for a general contractor, I've never encountered any other file type that I had to put in. So I think that covers all of our bases. So even though Navisworks can do more, I think ACC covers everything that we need right now. Cool. Um, and for your Revit models that you're going here, are you translating those to the NWCs first? No, that's a great question because that's something that was kind of holding us back from model coordination for a while that you couldn't transform within model coordination, but now you can. So now once you have your models uploaded to your coordination space and in a view, you can transform them within a view. So a great example recently is someone on our VDC team, they're coordinating two buildings that are right next to each other. And they'd started them both, but they weren't at the same, they weren't using the same origin, but they wanted to to use in another platform. The problem was they'd already created issues and they wanted to transform a whole model to be able to get it in the right spot. Because that issue is tied to the individual model element and like the individual model, when you transform a model, the issues move with it. So we don't have to worry about losing issue data 
that and you know an issue ends up out in outer space it's going to stick with that model it was attached to so i actually think that's a really great feature yeah that's nice that's awesome thank you so to wrap this all up here no matter what kind of workflow we're using navisworks or acc model coordination we can tie it all together and maybe we use both of these depending on what we're doing and we can tie it all together here with acc issues so I'm going to show some way it looks, the interface looks a little bit different depending on where we're at. So we're going to start here in model coordination and we're going to go to issues. And here I can see my issue list. So this is going to be all the issues that are in my coordination space. So I'm going to select issue 128 here. And when I click on it, it's going to go ahead and take me into this interface. So on the left, I see the list of all my issues in my coordination space. On the right, I see details about this issue number 128. Let's say because I'm looking at some piping and a structural floor slab here, I want to actually select that floor to see a property of it. So I'm going to select my floor. And then it's actually going to eliminate this section view that I'm looking at, just kind of show me everything. I can still, if I want to, open up the properties and look at the properties of this floor. Maybe I'm trying to understand how thick it is to determine how far that P-trap has to be down. But all I need to do to get back to that view that shows everything is I just need to click on the issue again on the left, and it will take me back to that original view that I had set. If we go ahead and flip over into either the build or docs interface, we can also access issues. But here we're going to see all of our project issues. So we're not only looking at coordination issues, we would see any, you know, here we've got some third party inspections, we've got, um, you know, safety, any issue that's been defined for the project. But I can come over here and I can actually filter issues. So I'm going to filter that I only want to see coordination issues. I'm going to select that same issue 128 we were looking at, and here I can see more details on it. If I were to scroll down in the properties of this issue, there's two things that I do want to highlight here. The first is the placement. So this project, we were using NWC files, larger project, it made more sense. And as I've mentioned, you know, that issue is tied to the individual model. So if I click the link that's here for this placement, it's actually going to open this up in files. So it's going to open a new tab in my browser and open this individual model in files. So sometimes this is useful if there's too much clutter around. So I'm trying to figure out what do I, what am I responsible for changing? This is what we're going to see here. However, the downside is we don't see it in the full context like we would when we were in model coordination. So something to keep in mind. You can also use, there is a plugin for Revit. So if a project participant wants to see if you are using Revit files, that's the caveat this doesn't work with NWCs, but if you are using those native Revit files in model coordination, you can use the coordination plugin for Revit, and they have access to all these issues within their native authoring tool, and then find these issues within that space. So that's another tool that's out there too. We also have the ability, if we you know, look back at this, these properties of this issue, is we get a screenshot. So, you know, I can tell that this was done in Navis because I can see, well, A, it looks a little different. And I can see that we've colorized our system. So I know that that's where this is coming from. But what it's gonna do is for every issue that we create in model coordination, it's gonna take a screenshot of that model view that we were at when we created the issue. That image is again, then going to end up in photos. So it'll end up with all of your other photos by default, the title is screenshot, you know, date and time. So just be aware that this will end up in photos if you're creating issues in model coordination. So we've got lots of different properties that we can assign to these issues. And the keys I wanna hit here, that we wanna make sure that we're making a title descriptive so that people can understand what's going on. I always recommend prefacing it like we've done here. This is for some sleeving coordination. So we're just using a level prefix. This is level two. If it's a specific room, I might do the room name and number. And then I'm giving direction to what actually needs to happen here. We need to move the pipe beneath the thickened slab. Because this is all within ACC, 
we also have the option to add references. So I've got a list of references available here. I could see this being most useful with files and RFIs. So let's say a trade partner does a sketch and they go ahead and they upload that to somewhere in files. I can attach that directly through this reference. Let's say this issue needed to be elevated to an RFI. I can reference an RFI so it's not quite elevating it, but it's still keeping it all in the same system so that when I reference that RFI later, I can see it's tied to the issue and I know where to get all of my information. The other key feature um, within the properties of all these issues is the ability for this comment section. So I think it's important to keep everything in one spot when we're dealing with lots of you know, complex buildings. So in this case, uh, Kyle here was able to note that we could refer to a structural detail for reference or a structural plan, and we can go back and forth. We can have a conversation in here about the issue, and that way everything is tracked in one spot. So at the end of the day, we have to communicate this information with everyone on the team or everyone who's involved. So here's where we can utilize ACC's reporting tools. So here I was able to create an issued detail report of only coordination items. So I get that screenshot, obviously I can click a link and see a bigger screenshot. I get any comments that have made, including if it's by multiple people, I will get that whole history there. So in my meeting minutes, what I can do is keep my traditional minutes pretty streamlined and then just attach this report to the end. So I have all the information consolidated in one place. So to kind of wrap up this conversation here, we have a lot of tools available to us now with ACC model coordination. The model setup we are now using on every project. We are uploading models to ACC model coordination and using that as a way to federate models. Navisworks plugin makes a lot of sense, especially if you are really involved in Navisworks, really comfortable with it. I think that's almost like the easiest kind of baby steps into it and it works. We know that this plugin in Navisworks works. ACC model coordination has a lot of possibilities to it. There are tools that work in it right now that are available for anyone to use. And then at the end of the day, I think the strongest part of this is the ACC issues feature, where we can keep all of our project issues in one place. Going back to that concept of a single source of truth, everyone can come into one location and see how this coordination process fits into the project as a whole. That was awesome. Thank you again, Laura, for, for that work, work through, or the, the walkthrough, excuse me. You know, I, you and your team are, are certainly keeping your eyes on the new technology or watching to see what's out there. Um, like we're seeing other firms, you're moving to the cloud, you can just see the benefits and the, the ease and the convenience. You, you demonstrated two parallel workflows here. Um, you know, one's very desktop and one's very not desktop. What, if anything, would you say kind of as a final question here? What are the final pieces of functionality that you would want to see in the ACC model coordination that you could uh, either retire your Navisworks workflow or at least diminish it so kind of your ACC model coordination workflow is your first choice? So the first thing I see is being able to set colors and transparencies in ACC model coordination. Like I've said, I think it makes it a lot easier, especially when you're working with a consistent color scheme over and over, that not only can I as a coordinator know what's going on, a project manager can come into the model and they at least know that blue is duct and green is pipe. I think I said that backwards, blue is pipe, green is duct. So they know if they see a round green element that that's a duct. So that being able to color and make things transparent is really key. Also, when we do a lot of visual inspections, being able to make ceilings transparent and being able to set those is like a preset filter so that I can just, I want to see all my walls transparent. You know, having those kinds of visual abilities would make a big difference. Almost kind of related to that is the ability to do some like search sets. So right now, that's why you know, I talked about that Revit, Revit publish view feature, where we really want to be able to dive in and like find things very specifically, um, whether we want to set up a clash for that or whether we just want to visualize it. So having that um, search set kind of functionality, I think, would really help. 
and tied to that as well is just the ability to filter our data a bit more. So especially in Clash, we don't have quite the flexibility that we do in Navisworks yet, um, where we can really dive in deeper. This is where I think, like I said, you know, today I was really focused on construction coordination because that's what I'm doing every day. I'm not doing design coordination. However, I, this is why I think that model coordination as it stands today might work a little bit better in the design world, although it is getting up to speed as it does get these more tools to be a usable workflow for the whole process in construction coordination. All right, perfect. Thank you so much again for your time and, and walking us through this. Um, we really appreciate it. So as we're wrapping up here, um, just real quick, if, if any of you would like to reach out here to CAD, here's the ways you can keep in touch and uh, ping us. And if you want to join us or, or submit for AU passes, you can reach out to us on social media or any of these contacts here. If you'd like to just kind of listen along and, and join us in person, we have our BIMXT network. We have seven cities where we have live events throughout the year. You can see them there on the left. We have our BIMXT online, which meets periodically over Zoom as well. We've got international speakers on that. So it, was a, it was a great outlet for us to continue keeping in touch over the lockdown. It's kind of expanded back into the cities you see over there. And of course, we've got BIMXT on LinkedIn where we're publishing all these great videos from the one we just saw from Laura and other contacts and everything we're getting from all of our in-network stuff. So again, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Laura, so much for your time. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next time.